Throughout the country, there is a network of groundwater that gets heated up to boiling temperatures. This happens so much that you will often see fumaroles throughout the landscape. This is steam escaping from the earth. These, I think, are bog bilberries, but as you see, all those little flowers there, yeah, it's not the right season. The Blue Lagoon is actually filled with the runoff water from the nearby Svartzangi Geothermal Power Plant. So behind me right here is a geothermal power plant. And what they do is that they take the steam coming out of the earth and they use it to produce electricity. It's not pollution, that is, that is H2O, that is steam coming out of there. I believe it's one third of the electricity in Iceland that is produced by geothermal power. And one really interesting thing about this particular geothermal power plant is that the water that is kind of like a byproduct of creating the electricity from the steam is funneled out into a nearby tourist location the blue lagoon and people come from all around the world to go to the blue lagoon and like relax in the water and i think a lot of people think that this is like natural water from the earth or something like a hot spring no it is basically the hot water runoff from this guy right here. So it's still natural, but after it's been processed by this factory, which is really, really cool. Geothermal energy has radically shifted the economy and the environmental effect on Iceland. According to the National Energy Authority of Iceland, which was very helpful in making this video, during the course of the 20th century, Iceland went from what was one of Europe's poorest countries, dependent on peat and imported coal for its energy, to a country with a high standard of living where practically all stationary energy is derived from renewable resources. Per capita, Iceland is the largest green energy producer in the entire world. Nearly all of the electricity in Iceland is from renewable energy. 73% comes from hydropower and 27% comes from geothermal power. So how does geothermal energy work? I don't know. For this, I'm going to refer you to an expert. How you doing? Okay, let me make this crystal clear for you. You see that steam? It's a friggin' waste flying out into the air doing nothing for nobody. I know a guy that'll fix that problem. When a lot of geothermal activity is found in an area, we drill a borehole into the ground in order to tap into that energy. You get me? Instead of going nowhere, now if that steam goes into this thing, Hey, would you look at that? That steam causes a turbine to spin. The turbine activates a generator, the generator produces electricity, that electricity powers your TV, and then bada bing bada boom, you watch Wheel of Fortune. It's as easy as that. Thank you, Professor. And it doesn't end there. After being used to generate electricity, the water from the earth, as well as condensed steam, are then piped into people's homes for heating and hot water. I'll be talking about that soon, but first... Yes, that's right, more sheep.
All right, you know the drill. Let's go back to the Agricultural University. This time, to chat about berries. Can you uh, tell me a little bit about the native fruits of Iceland? Like, what, what is growing out just outside, no, no greenhouse involved? We have uh, the, crowberry, the black crowberries. And then we have different varieties of uh, blueberries, which are super sweet. Uh, those berries, they need snow to be able to maintain their oh. health. Uh, the berries develop during the summertime and they become ripe in August. You can go in the morning and at that season, lay out there and just pick your berries and you won't notice the time flying. The berry season in Iceland is, uh, is short. It is short. So and it's... you can be very unlucky because you might have sudden frost right. for one day. And then it will be good for the next couple of weeks, but all the berries have gone bad. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I came here and I was just like, maybe I'll find like one berry or something. I was like, <laughs> everyone has told me like, nope. <laughs> no, no, you will yeah, not. August. <laughs> not, not at this point. And also yeah. you should have someone with you to help you recognize berries. Yeah, those taste like bear berries. Also, since the tourism increased, People are closing their lands, you know, the farmers, because they were having uh, groups of people, buses, 30, 40, even 100 people coming into the land, just picking everything oh. and stuff. The foraging tours. But then they also decided to try to offer the tourists who would be interested to pick, mm -hmm. to come into the land, you know, and at the right season. Right. They will introduce everything to them. Sure. You know. Not by the bus load on their own accord, but oh, through yeah, a tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> are, are native uh, berries here sold at markets too, or is that people purely yeah, yeah, foraging? They, 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 some people who have had big lands, they try to, uh, to pick them and sell them. It's in a very small scale. I'm not sure why they haven't been uh, uh, doing it uh, in a larger scale, hmm. because I think it's possible. I, I went to the volcano, the erupting volcano oh, yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. And what I noticed were uh, a, like an entire valley just full of crowberry leaves, yeah, which yeah, I, yeah. I recognized, uh -huh, uh -huh. but they were fruited. They Did, had like small green fruits or? Not just green, green fruits and some were all the way ripe, mm -hmm. but then dried out. Yeah, the, uh, the ones that are black and dried out mm -hmm. are since last season. The green ones are the ones who will become fresh this fall. This was right by the, the lava field there. Uh, you, Do you think the heat might have an effect or...? Well, I think the heat can help. Uh, yeah. It can also do bad things as well. You can also be looking at a place in front of you which is having a lot of crowberries, for example, with a lot of green small berries starting to appear. Then you'll take 10 steps and you'll see another place and there's nothing. Right. It might need some time to gather energy in mm -hmm. here between. So, uh, yeah, you need to just stay focused on the ground and search. You may be asking yourself now, Hey, I thought that this was about bananas. Why am I watching a video about geothermal power plants and berries? Well, first off, you have some attitude, mister. Second of all, bananas are technically berries. Third of all, and most importantly, I have been going down a rabbit hole that admittedly does diverge in the beginning. One path follows how geothermal energy is used in Iceland. The other path is how fruit is grown in Iceland. Well, next up, these two paths finally come back together. Well, that wraps it up for part four of my six-part series about the Icelandic banana and apparently other things. Uh, the, uh, the next episode, we're going to get back on track again about bananas because now the pieces are going to start to come together a little bit more. We're going to be talking about how geothermal energy is used to heat people's homes and also how it's used to heat greenhouses. So we're, we're getting back on topic, guys. I would like to take a moment to thank my Patreon supporters, including anyone who has signed up recently. Thank you so much. It's, it's how this channel happens, the support that I get over on Patreon. And uh, now is a great time to sign up if you have not 
because there's going to be a ton of exclusive content. Well, there is a ton of exclusive content over on my Patreon page, including a commentary for this episode and some behind-the-scenes footage as well. So uh, check that out in the description below. And again, thank you to the Agricultural University of Iceland for helping me in my uh, adventure to find out more information about the Icelandic banana. I'll put uh, links to their website as well as other sources that I used for this, uh, for this series in the description below. Thanks a lot, guys. I will see you next time.